Councilors, please, uh, to their desks. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the public hearing uh, regarding community development block grant and home programs. Clerk, please call the roll. His Honor the Mayor. Here. Councilor Enright. Here. Councilor McLaughlin. Here. Councilor Todd. Here. Councilor Walker. Here. Councilor Barlow. Here. Councilor Van Buren. Here. Councilor Kaplowitz. Here. All present, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, we do have a couple of speakers who have signed up. I uh, simply ask that you state your name and your address and uh, tell us what's on your mind. First speaker is uh, Mary Van Ous. Mrs. Van Ous. Good evening, Mayor, Councilors. Um, the Community Development Block Grant um, is a program that has been administered through the City of Oswego Community Development Office uh, since 1975. Um, this year, the New York State Housing Trust Fund Corporation Office of Community Renewal issued a notice of funding availability in December 2014 for the 2014 program year for the Community Development Block Grant Program. The available funding that was announced was $10 million for New York State CDBG for housing activities, $25 million for the Affordable Housing Corporation for Homeownership Development Programs, $1 million for Access to Home Programs, $1 million for Access to Home for Medicaid recipients, and $1.4 million in Restore Programs. Community Development Block Grants are federal, federally funded through the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, authorized by Title I of the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 and administered through the New York State Housing Trust Fund Corporation's Office of Community Renewal. The CDBG Small Cities Program provides grants to communities with populations under 50,000 people. Applicants for CDBG grants must ensure that 70% of all activities funded under the program primarily benefit low and moderate income households, those households with incomes at or below 80% of the area median income established by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. The City of Oswego is included in the Syracuse Metropolitan Statistical Area according to the U.S. Census Bureau. The Syracuse, New York Metropolitan Statistical, statistical Area, uh, median family income is $67,700 in 2014. 80% of the median income for a family of four in Oswego is $54,150 per year. So it would be families who had incomes um, of less than that uh, with a family of four that would be eligible for these programs. Each community development block grant funded activity must also meet one of the national objectives, benefiting low and moderate income households, aiding in the prevention or elimination of slums or blight, or meeting community development needs having a particular urgency. The 2014 maximum funding limits for towns, cities, and villages is $400,000 this year. For counties, it is $750,000. Community development block grant funds are available for housing projects, including rehabilitation, house, home ownership, residential water and wastewater systems that primarily benefit low moderate income persons. The application deadline for community development block grant program is Friday, February 27th, 2015. The financial assistance will be provided for the development of projects that meet New York State homes and community renewal investment strategy and that provide decent, affordable housing, <coughs> create suitable living environments, and enhance economic opportunities across the state. The City of Oswego priority projects for the CDBG program year 2014 round of funding for housing programs in New York State in the Regional Economic Development Council consolidated funding includes the continuation of the affordable home ownership program to assist 11 first-time home buyers with training, credit and budget counseling, and down payment and closing assistance. The amount of the application would be $300,000. In 2014, the City of Oswego Community Development Office was granted $400,000 in Affordable Housing Corporation funding for the Housing Rehabilitation Program. That was in August 2014. So that's why we won't be applying for housing rehab program uh, for this round. Um, the City of Oswego has administered an affordable home ownership program since 1995. 
119 families have purchased their first home in the city of Oswego with the support of this program. 19 applicants are currently on the waiting list for this program. Three local banks have also committed mortgage funding for this program. Public comments are welcome and encouraged. A copy of the NOFA is available at the Community Development Office at the Conway Municipal Center in the on the third floor, 20 West Oneida Street, Oswego. Applications are due, as I said, on Friday, February 27th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Landhouse. Um, the next speaker is Laura Rezek. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you pronounce your name? Yeah, it's Brezak. Brezak, sorry. Good evening. Um, I became aware of this program today, so forgive me if I am reading from my notes. Um, the CDBG program uh, sounds wonderful. And <clears throat> they list a, a number of objectives. And very last on the list is uh, the conservation of the nation's scarce energy resources, improvement of energy efficiency, and the provision of alternative and renewable energy sources of supply. Um, I'm also a recent transplant to Oswego. And when I first came here, I'd never been to Oswego, I noticed that driving in that there was a subway and a Tim Hortons with waterfront property. I was like, wow, that may be the only city in America that these chain restaurants get waterfront property. You give away the prime real estate to these chain restaurants. But then I noticed the beautiful building over on the river, and I asked, I go, oh man, are those apartments? And they're like, well, kind of. Technically, it's all subsidized housing. And then we went to dinner at Alex's, and I saw the, the high rises, and I'm like, are those apartments? <laughs> and they're like, no, that's more subsidized housing. So as a recent transplant and somebody who, who notices maybe what other people have taken for granted and see every day, this, there's, there are jewels here. The, the, the waterfront and the port and the harbor and the resources are the gems. You guys won the, the lottery when it comes to stuff like that. And if you're going to apply for a program like this, it seems to me, hey, I even turn off my <laughs> ringer. <laughs> Sometimes we make it. <laughs> so it just, it just it, it, my impression as a, a recent transplant is that there, there are funds available to enhance the quality of life for the preponderance of people, not just the low to moderate uh, income people, although their needs are valid and, and should not be ignored. Um, I recently had experience with a planning board meeting too and I was a little disturbed because it seemed like the primary goal was just to rubber stamp everything that came down the pike and I just would like to point out in my reading that these grants do more than just subsidize low to moderate there, there are other opportunities that could enhance the quality of life here in Oswego and really capitalize on what you guys already have going for you. This is a tremendous city and I see lots of uh, potential and uh, I'm excited for what the future brings. Um, and I guess that's all I have to say for now. But this grant was very, <laughs> it was fascinating reading and there are, other, there are other uses and objectives that they outline that I think could be explored more fully and utilized to better advantage. Thank you, Ms. Brissett. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who uh, would like to make a comment during the uh, public hearing? Yes. Come up, state your name. Your address. Um, Kim Van Shack. I live at 186 West 5th Street. I'm also kind of opposed to more funding for low to moderate income housing. I feel like there's other grants out there that we could use or we could find to benefit like some of us middle people that are looking to remove asbestos from their house or um, you know, improve the neighborhoods um, like some other organizations are doing in the city. Our, my neighborhood is now run overrun with low income to moderate housing which is impacting uh, possible potential resale in my home. I'm looking to retire 
in five to, to nine years. And if we keep having more low and uh, moderate income housing around my neighborhood and stuff, that's going to devalue my property. And I've been a resident here for 16 years now. And it's really sad to see something that you've worked so hard and you try to put some money into it and then invest in. And it's, you know, the neighborhood's parking lots and abandoned buildings and, and things like that. I just think the focus for grants would be better served if it was um, benefiting every population, not just low to um, moderate income. That's my position. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Is there anyone else out there who would like to make a comment? Hearing none, uh, we have a motion to adjourn the in the public hearing. Councilor Van Buren, Councilor Kaplowitz, please call the roll. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz. Yes. Councilor Enright. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Todd. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. The motion passes 7-0. This concludes the public hearing. We'll now go right into the public session. Uh, we do have uh, no one at this point in time signed up for the public session. Is there anyone out there? Who would like to uh, comment about anything that's on their minds? Seeing no one, uh, I will adjourn the uh, public session until we start our regular session at 7.30. This, that part is adjourned. Will the counselors please take their chairs? Okay. Sit down. <laughs> Easy now. Let's call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> the clerk, please call the roll. Presenter, the mayor. Here. Councillor Enright. Here. Councillor McLaughlin. Here. Councillor Todd. Here. Councilor Walker. Here. Councilor Barlow. Here. Councilor Van Buren. Here. Councilor Kaplowitz. Here. All present, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, under the mayor's report, uh, I, a couple of things uh, we, I want to talk about tonight. But first, let's start out with something a little more positive in the fact that I'd like to acknowledge the fact that a week and a half ago, the Elks Club in, in Oswego held their annual public safety awards dinner. Uh, and uh, that is where they nominate and, and recognize some of the contributions made by our police, fire, and sheriffs. And uh, this year, the Oswego Police was um, represented by Justin Delia and the firefighters by Paul Canzone. I want to thank those two gentlemen for their exemplary duty and their commitment to the city and to the people of our city. Uh, they represent fine police and fire force. Uh, I also uh, want to remind people that it's only 25 more days till day of spring. It's kind of hard to recognize that. Now, we've been through a very lot lately. So I would like to make a few comments on, on that. But first, I sent out a, a press release today. Uh, one of the problems we're seeing now because of the extreme cold is frozen pipe, pipes, frozen faucet lines. Um, we're, we're excavating the, 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 the streets to uh, if those lines are, are frozen. But there are some precautions you can do for your home. And that is during extreme cold weather, homeowners can take some preventative action steps to prevent the water pipes from, from freezing. Uh, so we put together a few suggestions. For example, keep your garage doors closed, especially if there's water supply lines in the garage. Uh, open kitchen and bathroom cabinet doors to allow uh, warmer air to circulate around the plumbing. Be sure to move any harmful uh, household products or chemicals so that children don't get into each of those. Also, when the weather is cold outside, let the cold water drip from the faucet. I know that seems counterintuitive, but that can actually, uh, uh, from the exposed pipes, the running water through the pipe can prevent that, from, uh, even if it's just a trickle from, from freezing. Also, uh, keep the thermostat set to the same temperature both during the day and night. Sometimes people turn them down at night, and that's when we can get some problems because it gets very cold lately. Uh, also, if you're going away for the weekend or on vacation to someplace warm, Leave your heat on to at least 55 degrees. You may come back to something very pleasant. Yeah, so that, that's it. Now also, let's talk about 
the roads. And uh, there's a lot of a lot of comments, a lot of criticism, uh, a lot of ideas. And as the mayor here and the council, there's a lot of misinformation going around too. One of the things that we like to do in Oswego is talk about things that uh, we may or may not know uh, the actual facts of why they're happening. Uh, we have had an alternate street parking rule here. We've tried to work. We've had bans where people are not allowed to park. Uh, this is an exceptional snowstorm. This is different from a lot of the ones we've had. I've been back in Oswego. I grew up, I was born and raised here. I, I left for a few years and came back 35 years ago. This is one of the ones that I remember as, as, as being particularly challenging. And we can legislate <coughs> plows, parking, we can do all kinds of things like that. But I'm asking you folks to do one thing, and that is to be a good neighbor. I mean, bottom line is, if you've got a neighbor who's parked on the wrong side of the street, tell him to move his car. I mean, we, we complain about the plows not being able to get through. If, then work with the city. We're, we're all in this together. We are one community. We'll, we, we are in it together. We'll get through it together. Spring will come. And it, it's about being a good citizen. And that's what I'm asking people to do. Um, instead of griping about the plows, griping about the DPW, help us out. Um, if, if there's the sidewalks aren't shoveled, maybe help out your neighbor. That's what we used to be like before. We used to help people. Uh, maybe because our neighborhoods have started to change a little bit. They've started to decline, as we like to say. Well, the people are still there. They live together, and they should pull together. And we're going to get through it together. So we're going to have a lot of discussion about plowing, and eventually the snow will go. We're talking about alternate year-round street parking. A lot of ideas. I've talked to a lot of people listened to their concerns, I've listened to their complaints, and I've listened to their ideas. So uh, I just want you to know that the people uh, in this office and in the council are listening to you. We're, we're going to try some things. One of the things we noticed is that having grown up in the city, we now have more cars than we have houses. We never used to have that. If you had a house, you probably had a car when I was a kid. Well, now most houses have multiple cars. We don't have enough parking pads. We want people to want to live in our city. If they can't park their car here, they may say, I'm not going to live in your city. And that's a reality. That's why we're doing this. Um, so that's, that's my comment. Now, I'd also like to go around the room and talk to every counselor here and make a comment about what your thoughts are. Because this is where the ideas come from. This is where the, we make the votes are decided on. And this is how uh, the city moves forward. We move forward together. So Fran, could you make some comments about <coughs> your thoughts? Please? Sure. Uh, I'd like to start off saying that I, I think, as, as every other council have, I was in favor of trying this alternate street parking when it first came out. You know, and uh, I can tell you now, I'm I'm not in favor of this of the current policy, by the way we're doing it. Uh, I still feel that there is uh, there is room for alternate street parking, but uh, not like we're doing it right now. In the past, we know the DPW can, does a great job, and this uh, this department. Uh, can clean streets. We've all seen it uh, through the years. And if you're looking around and you're seeing these streets that aren't plowed, there's a reason for it. There's, there's a problem. Uh, I have, speaking in the first word, with, with the density problems I have uh, with 61% uh, being rental property, I may not have a, a, a density problem with people. I definitely have a density problem with cars. Uh, we're getting to the point where landlords aren't even plowing out their driveways anymore because they feel they have the option or the children have an option of parking their cars on the street. And this is causing absolute chaos. So I have streets like Porter Street and Branson Street that are impassable right now, uh, not only with cars, but plows can't get through there. So the, uh, the residents are having a hard time even getting out of their driveway. So uh, I feel that some of the uh, uh, the word on the street is, you know, this 24-hour ban, which is truly, uh, uh, I think, is going to be a, a, a benefit over what we have right now, and uh, and even and even then, uh, I think there's there's room to uh, to improve. I'd like to see, like I said, the narrow streets just ban them all together because you can't even put one car uh, on the street and, and allow a plow to go through. I, I think we ought to. Uh, Think about uh, residential stickers uh, and vehicles, uh, very similar like they do in, in, in larger cities, like in, in Georgetown, for instance, down in Washington, where there's a, a problem with people off the road. If it continues like this, 
then we can take things in, in, in steps. But uh, right now, it's just not working, and it is a mess down in my ward. Thanks, sir. Councilor Todd. Yeah, I think that last year, we had a pretty good idea that it wasn't working the way that it was intended to work. And I think that in October, October, I think, Eric, we brought it up to try and get it so that there wasn't any alternate street parking at all until we had a better plan. And there was some discussion. They came up with a plan to have DPW, traffic, police chief, try and look through the situation and see what it was going to be and come up with a presentation in March. I still maintain that I don't think we should have any alternate street parking right now because it's just not working. As Fran says, we've got density issues in the first and third ward with vehicles. It's not like it is in some of the old, newer wards that have appropriate parking for, for the vehicles that they have. We don't. We have a lot of salt box houses that came in um, when this was mostly a factory dominated town. Those houses still stay there. They weren't provided with parking originally when they were built because that's how old the houses are and they're still not parking for them. And one of the big reasons we went to this was because the close proximity we have to some of the elementary schools, primarily towards Layton, you had so many of the landlords that were putting four, five, six cars in their front yard and blocking the sidewalks. It resulted in having a small child hit and killed by a car, and we tried to recognize that. We didn't want people walking on sidewalks and walking in streets. I don't know what the solution is. This isn't a solution for it. Right now it's not working. I think we need to end the alternate street parking at least now, so that we've got time to at least clean these streets up. I don't know if we put an emergency ban in or what we do, but we need to do something for the next week or two in anticipation of the snow. And God forbid we get hit with a, with a blizzard that's happened in March like has happened in the past. And they usually follow up on the cold years because the ice is so cold and there's so much ice cover on the lake. When it starts to heat up, all it does is drown us in lake effect. If that happens, we've really got problems. And if we haven't cleaned anything up now, once it ha we get hit with that snow, we'll never get ourselves unburied until spring. I think right now, we need to, my opinion is we need to issue an emergency order and get all the cars off the streets so the DPW can clean up the streets. Because right now, as Fran says, on Porter Street, I've got Lathrop Street, we've got some of these other smaller streets that are single cars. And as Fran says, some of these streets should never have any on-street parking. And I think that's what we tried to get to in October. But right now, it's... As much as I don't want to see people parking where they were parking before because I don't want to see people and children walking in the streets, it's just as dangerous now with people trying to get out of here. I think we need to issue an emergency order and stop all parking on the city streets right now. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Well, first, thanks, Mr. Mayor, for bringing this up uh, mm -hmm. to talk about. And, uh, we realize we need to make some changes and talk about it's the first uh, step in the right direction. I think I've probably been uh, most critical of the alternate uh, street parking policy, uh, only because the facts are is that uh, the roads are not safe to drive on, uh, and it's impossible to plow, nearly impossible to plow. Impossible to plow when you have to go around a car, uh, and it's impossible to plow when you can't get up the street. Uh, for instance, Fourth and Erie, between Fourth and Erie and, and Niagara. Uh, you can almost bet that uh, with some college housing or, or rentals, I should say, uh, that there's going to be a car double parked somewhere. And uh, the plow just, quite frankly, can't get up the road and they have to back down or they just don't touch it. And uh, you know, that's a problem. Um, and the other part is there's, there's some streets in my ward that are narrow with the snow banks to begin with. You get one car parked on there that isn't double parked, let's say, and sometimes it's still too so that tells me that parking cars on the street, at least in my ward, uh, is a problem. It makes it imp uh, impossible to make the roads uh, good enough to drive on. So uh, at least in my ward, uh, minimal people are affected by a total, complete ban, because most of my residents have driveways. It's interesting to note the feelings of the first and third ward counselors, because they're most sensitive to a full-on ban or not. Um, so I take what they say you know, very seriously. What's interesting is if we were to go to, uh, if we were to keep alternate street parking, 
I think we would have to do it in a way that most other municipalities do it, and that would be a 24-hour alternate street parking. So where we set the time, I would recommend 5 or 6 o'clock when people come home from work. Uh, they, they park, coming home, they park on the side of the street that they're legally supposed to park on, and uh, it's, you park on that side of the street only until six, 5 or 6 o'clock the next day. What that does is it makes it illegal to park on the other side of the road all day long. So uh, essentially you're only having cars on one side of the street all day, every day. What that does is gives the plow uh, a chance to plow the other three quarters of the road. And then when the cars flop over at uh, five or six o'clock the next day, they can clean where the cars were. Uh, like I said, I recommend the full ban, but it, the only, because I want to point out the problem still uh, with the alternate policy I just described is that you're still going to have to shovel and snow blow twice because at least in my house there's a rental across the street, a car parks to the left of my driveway, the car I go out and I snow blow, the car leaves the next morning and the snow that was around the car is back in my driveway again. Uh, so that's the problem I see with that. And it's still debatable that some uh, streets like Ontario uh, in the first and third ward still be impassable anyway. That's why I tend to favor the, the full-on ban, but I would just like to point out that I do, uh, I'm sensitive to what the first and third ward counselors say because they're a little more, it's, it's more sensitive issue in that area. I'm in favor of the full-on ban. Can I real quick just interject because it's something I forgot to say to go along with what Councilor Barlow said. That's workable and I don't have a problem with that, but where we have a lot of these houses that have been sold back that we've gotten back from cheap and ended up selling them for next to nothing because we just want them back on the tax rolls. Maybe an alternative to this is do what we a group of us have been trying to say for a couple of years now and when we get these houses instead of rehabbing them and turn them back into more lower moderate income housing we tear them down and use that money to tear them down and sporadically between the first and third wards or some of these areas that we have high density we turn these into small parking lots to get these cars off the street and we turn them in there. I mean, I agree with you on that. It's, but having them across the sidewalks in the front yard is just as dangerous for the kids. So I think we need to look at starting to establish smaller parking lots. I mean, the plus side of that is if you get enough of them, some of these areas, especially in mine at Franz Ward, really, you're at the point now where you have to really seriously look at long-term plan of taking down whole sections of our wards and start opening it up to redevelop it. They really serve no purpose. I mean, ideally, you'd like to see some of these houses just gone so that you could redevelop it and bring in more you know, income-based housing and more housing that you would bring people that want to come in and live there. They're beautiful areas down by the lake. So maybe starting off with these small parking lots is probably maybe the better way to go. Thanks, sir. Councilor Kepler. Thank you, Your Honor. appreciate the fact that uh, Councilor and the amateur meteorologist uh, this is six more weeks of winter. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you know, we, we, we actually have been working on, uh, I think last fall, it was pretty obvious to everybody that the alternate parking as it currently exists uh, has, its, has some strengths, but certainly has some weaknesses that we needed to change the system. And uh, counselors uh, Van Buren and Todd and I have met with uh, Chief D. Care and others uh, that have responsibility for parking on our streets. Uh, Commissioner DPW is there as well. And, um, we're actually on March the 3rd's committee agenda. We will officially begin a public discussion about what to do about the parking options in our city uh, all year round. And of course, uh, what we are looking at is uh, already been talked about is the alternate parking 12 months and 24 hour all year round. And then, of course there's benefits, to, with some exceptions of course, there's some streets that, that can't handle that and that's also part of uh, developing a plan. I don't think personally we can go back to the old process. I mean that was, that was, uh, that was fine maybe in its day and, and it certainly is easier on our DPW and I, I understand all that and we've created a lot of hardships on them but there's the reasons why we now have public parking on our streets, and that is the fact that we have many homes that don't have adequate parking. 
Um, I had uh, uh, a realtor call me and, and uh, when we instituted this several years ago and said, you just made many, many more homes in the city of Oswego marketable. Because they don't have pads or adequate driveways and now they have public parking allowed 12 months out of the year. You don't have to worry about where to put your car. You always have a place to put it. So we've made our homes a little bit more marketable. I've actually had family, they had a lady told me that now our family can come see her at Christmas time. So they got a place to put the cars. So they can stay overnight. So they're driving, you know, a couple hours from Utica and then uh, not, you know, having to leave because they don't have any place to put their cars. Things like that that become, you know, you got to think about the, you know, the, 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 all the benefits and certainly some of the hardships that are created. And that's what makes our job all that much more difficult because it becomes a, uh, you know, wane, uh, a wane option, a wane option. I do believe that the alternate parking uh, 12 month, 24 hour is the way to go for a lot of reasons. Um, I think occasionally you do snow emergencies, like uh, Court, you did it a couple weeks ago, Your Honor, and I know Cortland is doing that uh, today and tomorrow to get rid of their snow, and that's broadcast on the TVs. I've heard the criticism that we don't get the information out, and I think we need to make any and every effort to make sure that when we make snow, have snow emergency plans or others, that we have a uh, we, we use that every available means to let folks know. I can't help it that some folks don't get a newspaper or don't have the internet uh, or aren't watching Time Warner, but you know, we can only do so much on our end to let folks know what's going on. And, uh, but occasionally, and this might be uh, time to throw another couple day ban on there in, in, so that we can figure out what to you know, get some of the snow cleaned up. But if we do that too, we, actually, we also have to provide some options for some folks, whether we're plowing out by Wright's Landing or the old price, price chopper lot or communicating with the college. So we have some lots available there for people to take their cars. We have to have some options for folks to get them off the street. I think we have a, we have a duty to provide some options for folks. And I also believe with the way the policy is working right now and the alternate parking that we kind of put ourselves in a bad predicament. We started courtesy ticketing folks, and I do know that throughout the year we may or may not tow cars. I'm not trying to be a hard leap on this one, but I really think we have to have zero tolerance. When somebody's parked on the wrong side of the street, you, you tow the car. And uh, it's not a matter of, uh, I mean, the rule is the rule. We have the rule so, that, so we have an orderly snow removal plan in place at night. When cars are parked on both sides of the street, we get, we get in a situation where we can't plow, where we can't plow. And uh, I think it uh, doesn't take long for folks to understand that uh, if you park on the wrong side of the street, the car is going to get towed. And that'll go with a 24-hour, 12-month. Same thing, zero tolerance. City of Rochester, you get, you get about a half hour, 45 minute grace period. And, and at 5 o'clock, 5.30, there, you know, everyone's looking at their watches and they're saying, i got to move my cars. That's what you do. That's an orderly, that, that creates the orderly process that we need. So then not only can we plow snow, but we can also run a street sweeper right down the side of the curb, right down to the curb instead of running the snake pattern through and we might just as well not have even run the sweeper or trying to collect leaves, and uh, which is a headache and heartache for our DPW, but when you always have a lane open, I think there are certainly a lot of benefits. Um, I said, <coughs> I'm sure we're going to continue this discussion on March 3rd. And uh, certainly look forward to <coughs> anyone's comments on uh, what we're, you know, what we're up against. But again, this is also a sweet go. This is an exceptionally bad winter. Please be patient. Please be kind to your neighbors. I think all of us have taken our snow blowers or our shovels and helped some of our neighbors. And I think we need to do more of that. Drive safe. The banks are high. We don't have the people or the, you know, or the equipment. To get rid of it all. It's physically and financially impossible. So unless we have a, you know, Governor Cuomo wants to call a snow emergency or a disaster declaration, we get the National Guard in here, perhaps maybe that's, uh, you know, that's how you do it. But as a community itself, we cannot do any more than we have with, with the resources that we have. Nobody likes their taxes going up. And, yeah, we can probably bump them up another 30 percent and buy the equipment and get the manpower to do that. But that's, that's it's not feasible. It's not feasible. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. <coughs> uh, <laughs> just trying to take care of you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Council. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with many of the statements that were already made tonight. Uh, 
I think some of the issues that we have were unforeseen consequences of the ultimate street parking, people abusing it, people with driveways parking on the street to avoid having their uh, driveways plowed in by the you know, snow plows. That's definitely an issue for us. Um, when the conversation was brought up in October, I wanted to have it addressed then. Uh, I think it made more sense. I'm for if we put a ban on to get all the streets off the cars. One of the issues that I saw was that in the past we issued uh, permits for people to do front yard parking. It's way too late in the season now to even try and reconcile that. You know, we're not going to be able to clear out front yards. They're not going to be able to clear out their front yards. And that's kind of the issue that I didn't want to get into this late in the season when we saw that there was a problem. So that's why I was looking forward to address, be addressed then. I agree with the 24-hour parking plan. I think that a winter parking ban and a 24-hour parking plan are two separate issues. Uh, the 24-hour parking plan, like many of the statements made tonight, they provide better continuity to the city. They give you a uh, better ability to monitor your leaf pickup, your street sweeping, your snow plowing during the day. I'm sure we could all list a dozen examples. Mohawk Street, for instance, on the west side, trying to get that down that during the day is a nightmare. Uh, I think we all know that that's an issue. So if we did switch to that, you know, what we're talking about is not just an alternate street parking plan, but really a, a comprehensive look at the city's parking plan, period. We're going to have streets that are going to get no parking. We're going to have streets that have only one side parking. We're going to have streets that have alternate. They'll provide better continuity for all the residents. I think that's the best way to go for us. I think with that, we need to address some of the DPW problems that we have, people not bagging their leaves and that type of stuff that's going to fix it up. If we're going to change that to match the new alternate schedule, then we need to let people know that bagging is the standard now. It has to be bagged and picked up. Same with street sweeping, that type of thing. So I, I think it, there's ways that we, when we do this, it's going to have benefits on multiple sides, but there's also cons. You know, there's always problems that we're going to foresee. Uh, the winter parking plan, we can have one. We can not. It's a policy. If the council sees that, you know, for us, we need that 12 hours overnight to clear out the snow with no cars on the street, that might be the option that we take. But we need to be able to allow people to park out front lawns or do something else. Uh, in the meantime, we're not going to be able to create municipal parking lots and if these sub-zero temperatures continue, it's going to be tough for people to park at Rice Landing and then walk back to their homes. That's you know, going to be an issue for folks. So those are things that we need to address when we start the discussion next week. Thank you, sir. Now we've got a couple of plowmen here uh, that can yeah. shed some uh, valuable light. Ah, Councilor beautiful. Walker, what are your thoughts? There's a lot of good points through all the counselors here. Right now, personally, I think you should admit or put in effect parking ban, get everybody off the road, get our roads cleared. DPW can do that. I mean, it's going to be work for them, but it needs to be done. The problem, I mean, maybe we can contact other municipalities, come in and help. Townships, county, state, National Guard, got to get someone in here. But all the good points that I see is the 24 hour, seven days a week, one side or the other. You're not... This five-hour window they got, they can't clean the roads in five hours. There's no possible way. And what happens if it keeps snowing? And just keep them on one side of the road for the whole year or the whole day, 24 hours would be perfect. And I mean, there's just a lot of, a lot of work to be done out there, and I think we should probably impl implement something right now to get the roads clear, and hopefully the people will work with us. And we'd like to say, if they're on the road, you get ticketed and towed got to happen. Thank you, sir. Our newest addition, Councillor Lachlan. going to be short and sweet. <laughs> I'm against. <laughs> Thank you. Alternate street parking, period. Thank you, Councillor. I appreciate that. Um, and also, uh, I noticed that a lot of people are snow blowing into the street, plowing from their doorway into the street. I would really ask you, don't do that. Um, I was just down in New York over the weekend, and they got four or five inches of snow. And they don't plow it, and people walk around it. There's ice flows everywhere. So it's a tough winter for everybody. And, you know, we kind of, we know how to deal with snow. So we, when we are inconvenienced by it, we really take exception to it. It's been a very challenging winter. So, but collectively, I think we've got some good ideas. We're, we're going to come up with the right solutions. Um, are there any other comments? Uh, any other yeah, reports? Mayor. Yes, Councilor? I, well, one thing I failed to mention uh, the first time was that, you know, I feel I have a real safety issue down in the first ward. I, I can't speak for everybody, but uh, driving around, because I like to drive and do my, do my routes down there, 
I can barely get through with my car, and if we have a fire, I'm even seeing major streets like Seneca Street and Cayuga Street, but I doubt you can get a fire truck down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we don't implement anything uh, like a 24-hour like a ban, we have to do something right now, at least get the cars off the street, put a ban in, give the DPW a couple of weeks, and see if we can't widen these streets up and get it, because I'm afraid right now we have a disaster waiting to happen. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, any other reports? Councilor Vindler. Uh, I've got two things, actually, thank you. <clears throat> uh, one, I just want to make a comment about the statements made during the public hearing. I, it's nice to see people taking an interest in civic planning and uh, what we do with our assets. I think a lot of what they're seeing was part of uh, you know, some poor civic planning and Buena Oswego is really suffering an identity crisis. Uh, you know, you take our waterfront, for instance, you know, there's industry down there, there's entertainment uh, and hotel features on the water. If you're ever coming in from the lake into the river, it does kind of look a little ugly when you see all that infrastructure. You know, you used to have the grain silo down there, you've got oil tanks, you've got the port. You know, it's one of those things where uh, planning really would have been key in what we were doing. You know, the west side was featuring more with the International Marina and the port and some of the amenities and those type of things. You'd never put a wastewater treatment plant on your waterfront right next to the river. I mean, that's just what a way to kill business. So, I mean, it's interesting to put that type of thing next to your historical landmarks that we've been talking about recently. So it's good to see people taking an interest in that, and it's good to see people coming to really care about what happens to their city and what goes into their city. I think one of the points that you can make with they brought up, you know, the more lofts, the way supply. Those are all really nice things to get remodeled, but they do feature some subsidized housing. The nice element about those is they do have a plan to slowly attrition those out so that the subsidized housing becomes less over the years, but there is a certain amount that you will never get back. So that, that needs to be taken into consideration. Um, you know, I look forward to seeing the development in Midtown. I think that could be an east side anchor for the downtown. It needs to be really closely monitored so that we can see that develop well and be something of an asset really spur business and development. The second thing I want to talk about, <clears throat> on uh, Friday I met with President Stanley and her staff. I had a very productive meeting with them and I just wanted to thank uh, President Stanley, Nick Lyons, Howard Gorin, Gordon, and Christy Eck for meeting with me. We talked about some of the issues that are affecting the city, uh, the city's communication with the college and the positive things that are going on. Uh, we have a lot of staff and department heads that are already meeting with them and working with them on solutions problems. Uh, our police chief and the campus police chief have been meeting. They're already making plans for Bridge Street Run. Uh, President Stanley and her staff are putting together alternatives to Bridge Street Run, uh, including and some other things that they're going to be doing out there to try and ease the burden on the city. Um, there's some other things that we talked about that we hope to get going for this year and bring towards the fall. Um, one of the things that they're doing, that they have some heavy involvement from city residents, and it's a press release that I like to read from them that I told I'd bring to the county. Um, City, a community roundtable event concerning design of an interactive garden at SUNY Oswego will be held at 6 p.m. Tuesday, March 10th in the community room of the Oswego City Library. The goal of the roundtable event is to join community members together on the design of an interactive garden and laboratory space on the SUNY Oswego campus. The project to transform a former construction staging area on campus took its initial steps last autumn with the goal of creating an abundant reparative garden and learning space for students as well as the Oswego community. The garden is located adjacent to the Shinneman Center, Lee Hall, and Wilbur Hall. Using permaculture principles and techniques, the garden will mimic natural systems to create a thoughtfully designed landscape that will maximize beneficial interactions among plant, animal, and insect species. Upon maturity, the garden will also provide an abundance of nutrient-rich food. Uh, many Oswego residents have contributed and donated uh, their time and materials to this project, so I wanted to just bring awareness that there is going to be uh, a roundtable event to get more any input, it will be at the library, 6 p.m. on March 10th. Thank you, sir.
on everybody, but really primarily our wards. Um, and I think this is a great first step to try to open a dialogue. And I appreciate the fact that we want to go out there and sit down and try and move forward on this. So thank you. Thank you, Council. Okay. Any other comments? I'd just like to comment on one thing that Councillor Van Buren said about waterfront development. I know I've worked with uh, Ms. Van Ouse, and we do have a waterfront development plan, and it's uh, very complete and very professional, so I want to thank Ms. Van Ouse for that. Uh, we have been updating it, working with the port, and uh, there, is, there is a plan in place. Uh, if there's no other comments, will the clerk please call Resolution 69? Resolution 69 would approve the minutes of the Common Council meeting held February 9th, 2015. Councilor Van Buren, Councilor Barlow. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Todd? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. The resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution 70. Resolution 70 would appoint Commissioner of Deeds. Councilor Enright? Councilor Todd? Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councillor Barlow? Yes. Councillor Van Buren? Yes. Councillor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councillor Enright? Yes. Councillor McLaughlin? Yes. Councillor Todd? Yes. Councillor Walker? Yes. The resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution uh, 71. Resolution 71 would grant permission to the Greater Oswego Fulton Chamber of Commerce to hold their annual farmers market on West First Street and surrounding areas on Thursday evenings beginning May 21st, 2015. Councillor Todd? Councillor Enright? Any discussion? Councillor Barlow? Yes. Councillor Van Buren? Yes. Councillor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councillor Enright? Yes. Councillor McLaughlin? Yes. Councillor Todd? Yes. Councillor Walker? Yes. The resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution 72. Resolution 72 would approve the use of the East Side Fire Station for a blood drive to be held March 2nd, 2015. Van Buren? Councillor Barlow? <coughs> Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councillor Barlow? Yes. Councillor Van Buren? Yes. Councillor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councillor Enright? Yes. Councillor McLaughlin? Yes. Councillor Todd? Yes. Councillor Walker? Yes. The resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution 73. Resolution 73 would accept a donation of a television from Walmart for use by the Juvenile Fire Setter Program at the Oswego Fire Department. Kaplowitz? Councillor Van Buren? Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councillor Barlow? Yes. Councillor Van Buren? Yes. Councillor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councillor Enright? Yes. Councillor McLaughlin? Yes. Councillor Todd? Yes. Councillor Walker? Yes. The resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution 74. Resolution 74 would accept a donation of a monitor and graphics card from John Schwago for use by the Oswego Fire Department. Councillor Barlow? And Councillor McLaughlin. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councillor Barlow? Yes. Councillor Van Buren? Yes. Councillor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councillor Enright? Yes. Councillor McLaughlin? Yes. Councillor Todd? Yes. Councillor Walker? Yes. The resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution 75. Resolution 75 would approve the community development block grant and home programs. Councillor Van Buren? Councillor Enright? Discussion? Councillor Barlow? No. Councillor Van Buren? No. Councillor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councillor Enright? No to table. Councillor McLaughlin? No to table. Councillor Todd? Yes. Councillor Walker? Yes. Councillor, the motion is defeated three to four. Please call resolution 76. Well, we're going to call 75. 75. Yeah. This is a vote for 75. Okay. Councillor Barlow? Yes. Councillor Van Buren? Yes. Councillor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councillor Enright? Yes. Councillor McLaughlin? Yes. Councillor Todd? No. Councillor Walker? Yes. The motion passes, or the resolution passes 6 1. Thank you. Uh, please call resolution um, 70. Six. Resolution 76 would authorize the mayor to sign all documents necessary with the New York State Department of Transportation for the relocation and adjustments of sanitary sewers and appurtenances on Route 481 <laughs> and Churchill Road. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Todd? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. Councilor Todd? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. Counc
Appurtenances. Appurtenances. Should have been all over that for him. Okay, it's all right. I was going to let her. I was going to let her get a shot at it. Who wants to step on this one? Councilor Walker and Councilor McLaughlin. Is there any discussion on this appurtenance? Please call the roll. Councilor Barlow. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz. Yes. Councilor Enright. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Todd. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. The resolution passes 7-0. It's called Resolution 77. Resolution 77 would authorize the mayor to sign all documents necessary with the New York State Department of Transportation for the relocation and adjustments of water mains on Route 481 in Churchill Road. <laughs> <laughs> no appurtenances. Oh, no. <laughs> That's why you don't get to wear the robe. <laughs> Councilor Walker. Councilor McLaughlin. It was the word of the day, I swear. <laughs> Why don't you do some homework on that? Uh, uh, please call them. Councilor Barlow. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz. Yes. Councilor Enright. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Todd. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. The resolution passes 7-0. Please call resolution 78. Resolution 78 would authorize the mayor to sign change order number two with John R. Dudley Construction Company for project modifications to the Charles E. Riley Booster Pump Station project. Councilor Van Buren. Councilor McLaughlin. Is there any discussion? No, Councilor Barlow. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz. Yes. Councilor Enright. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Todd. Yeah. Councillor Walker. Yes. The resolution passes 7-0. Please call resolution 79. Resolution 79 would authorize the mayor to sign amendment number two with a professional services agreement with CNS companies for, proje for modifications to the Riley water tank replacement project. Councillor and Councillor Walker. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councillor Barlow. Yes. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Kaplowitz. Yes. Councillor Enright. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Todd. Yes. Councillor Walker. Yes. The resolution passes 7-0. Please call resolution 80. Resolution 80 would approve attendance at the company officer's leadership training course to be held April 10th and 11th, 2015 in Rochester, New York, at the request of Jeffrey M. McCroby, fire chief. Councillor Kaplowitz. Councillor Van Buren. Is there any discussion? Please call the roll. Councillor Barlow? Yes. Councillor Van Buren? Yes. Councillor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councillor Enright? Yes. Councillor McLaughlin? Yes. Councillor Todd? Yes. Councillor Walker? Yes. Re the resolution passes 7-0. Please call resolution 81. Resolution 81 would approve attendance at the Fire Investigator 2 course to be held June 15th through the 26th, 2015 in Montour Falls, New York, at the request of Jeffrey M. McCroby, Fire Chief. Enright. Councilor Todd, any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Todd? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. The resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution 82. Resolution 82 would approve attendance at the Advanced Vehicle Contraband Concealment Course to be held March 23rd and 24th, 2015 in Endicott, New York, at the request of Tory L. D. Care Police Chief. Councilor Barlow, Councilor Kaplowitz. Any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Todd? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. The resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution 83. Resolution 83 would approve attendance at the ASP instructor course to be held March 30th, 2015 through April 3rd, 2015 in Elmira, New York at, at the request of Tory L. D. Care Police Chief. Councilor McLaughlin and Councilor Enright. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Todd? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. The resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution 83. Resolution 83A okay. would waive the rules of the Common Council to present resolution number 83B from the floor without committee consideration. Councilor Van Buren? Councilor Kaplowitz? Please call the roll. Councilor Barlow? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councilor Enright? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Todd? Yes. Councilor Walker? Yes. The resolution passes 7 0. 
Please call Resolution 83B. Uh, re resolution 83B would authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to Andritz Separation Incorporated and further authorize the City Chamberlain to complete a budget amendment to the Sewer Enterprise Fund to fund the repairs of the centrifuge at the East Side Wastewater Treatment Plant. Councillor uh, Van Duren and Councillor uh, Walker. Is there any discussion here? Councillor Van Duren. Uh, if anyone has any questions, Gary Hallen is here to answer them. If anyone has anything they want to discuss with them. Councilor Yes, I, I just, I'd like to just hear from Gary um, a little bit about the issue. And if we have a centrifuge that isn't working right now, how, how are we handling that on the, on the east side, Gary? And how long before we get something in place? Well, we... Um we move most of our sludge over to a, uh, a different holding tank that we don't normally put sludge in. Um, that's allowed us to kind of get back to what normal would be right around this time of the year. Um, so I'm, uh, we're going to be tight even doing this because uh, it looks like some of it's, um, you know, eight weeks out, 12 weeks out. Um, we do have another tank we can do the same thing with. Um, it just is really going to make it difficult by the time summer comes around trying to um, reduce our sludge because we're, we're not processing right now um, so we're we're able to um, get by and uh, uh, the length of time that this will take to get in place will probably be okay uh, it's just in the summer we'll probably have to run overtime to process sludge and just try to get as much out as we can um, this whole process is taking a little bit longer than I anticipated because uh, Andrix is um, kind of dragged their feet getting us quotes and everything for the repair and there's we can't really go anywhere else because it's their equipment um, and a lot of its uh, internal parts um, transmission um, we have to send out what's called the scroll to have it reworked um, it's about eight feet long and three feet around um, it's almost like a horizontal uh, washing machine is you know except it's high-tech um, all the electronics, um, we had some issues with them. That's what caused the problem to begin with. And they don't even support them anymore, uh, let alone have replacement parts. So that's part of this, uh, is really upgrading it to um, like new condition, uh, except for the external support part. Um, you know, the, uh, all the internals will be changed and all the electronics will be upgraded. Any other questions? Who's Councillor Barlow? Yes. Councillor Van Buren? Yes. Councillor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councillor Enright? Yes. Councillor McLaughlin? Yes. Councillor Todd? Yes. Councillor Walker? Yes. The resolution passes 7 0. Please call Resolution 84. Resolution 84 is a motion to move to executive session to, dis to discuss the proposed acquisition, sale, or lease of real property. And this is in regards to 1 through 7 West Seneca Street and Whitney Streets. Van Buren, Councillor Kaplowitz. Please call. Councillor Barlow? Yes. Councillor Van Buren? Yes. Councillor Kaplowitz? Yes. Councillor Enright? Yes. Councillor McLaughlin? Yes. Councillor Todd? Yes. Councillor Walker? Yes. The resolution passes 7 0. Now be in executive session. Shouldn't take this to be very long. They have a sponsor to come out of. Councilor Van Buren, Councilor Todd, second. Uh, show of hands. Okay, call the roll. We have to have a motion. And the motion. Oh, oh, that's right. Motion to uh, adjourn. Who was that? It was John Walker. John Walker. Mr. McLaughlin. Now you can call the roll. Councilor Barlow. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Kaplowitz. Yes. Councilor Enright. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Todd. No. <laughs> Councilor Walker. The, He's motion, bad. the motion passes 6 1. Two. Yep. Are you going to miss me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no 